Welcome to the DataCamp course on spatial analysis in R with the SF and raster packages. I'm Zev Ross and I'm looking forward to introducing you to some powerful and exciting functionality available in R to help you get spatial analysis done smoothly and efficiently. In this course, we'll be introducing you to two key packages for spatial analysis, the new SF package for working with vector data and the great raster package for working with grids. You'll learn how to read data, prepare your data for spatial analysis, and conduct key spatial tasks for both vector and raster data. In the last lesson of the course, you'll use all of your new skills to perform a mini analysis looking at trees and green space in New York City. So let's get started with task number one in any spatial analysis, reading in data. For reading data into R, I'm going to introduce you to three functions. For vector data, all you need is stread. For raster data, we'll talk about the raster and brick functions. All three of these functions are flexible in the sense that they can read in a wide range of different data types, and they guess the input based on the input data suffix. For vectors, the stread function from the SF package has dramatically simplified reading vector data into R compared with previous approaches. With stread, you simply feed a path and the function guesses the type based on the suffix. With this example, you can see how simple it can be. In this case, we feed the function the path to a shapefile. And as I mentioned, stread can be used to read in a wide range of spatial types, including shapefiles, GeoJSON, GPS, NetCDF, and others. Examples in this course will focus on reading in shapefiles since they are still the most common vector spatial format. In particular, we'll be using New York City data on trees, neighborhoods, and parks. For raster data, the raster and brick functions perform almost identically, but are designed to read in different types of rasters. The raster function reads single band rasters, and brick reads in multi band rasters. So, a single band, also referred to as a single layer raster, is one that has just a single set of values for each grid cell. Examples would be something like elevation or land use. Here you can see that for a single band raster, you'd use the raster function. With multiband rasters, on the other hand, there may be multiple layers, meaning each grid cell may have multiple values. Examples include satellite images, where each band represents ranges of frequencies along the electromagnetic spectrum. In a true color satellite image, an image that looks like a photo, you would have three bands, one each for red, green, and blue bands of light. In order to read in this type of raster, you'd use the brick function. Here we use brick to read in a multiband raster. Like stread, the raster and brick functions can read in a wide range of data types and guess their type based on the suffix. In this course, you'll be reading in geotiffs of New York City, one for tree canopy and one satellite image. You won't be writing data in this course, but I want to point out the functions for writing vector and raster data. For vectors, use stwrite, and for rasters, use write raster. In both cases, like the functions for reading data, they guess the output format based on the suffix. Time to read in vector and raster data.